something's alive It just gets too late to learn Hi, I'm Howard Soons, the author of Down the Highway, The Life of Bob Dylan. And well, I'm lost somewhere. I must have made a few bad turns. And this is Play That Rock and Roll. You mentioned uh, your, your nemesis, Clinton Halen, and I think I would be remiss if I didn't ask one question about him because I got to say, I didn't realize there was a little beef between you guys. Uh, and for those listening who don't know, last year, Clinton Halen said some really cruel things about both you personally and your book. He is a fellow Dylan author. He's written many books about Bob. Do you have any idea what his problem is, where all this vitriol is coming from? Well, I mean, I think he's a ridiculous person, and I think he's a terrible <laughs> writer. I mean, he's, yeah. oh. I don't see him as a writer. I see him as a fan. He yeah. somehow parlayed this, this fan-like devotion to Bob Dylan into a, a kind of niche career as a Dylan biographer. To me, he doesn't write biography. He writes fan-type books. Now, that doesn't matter. In fact, the first book he did, Behind the Shades, was a pretty decent book. I mean, it was, I don't remember the, the source notes being very revealing. It seemed to be a kind of scrapbook of what everyone else had somehow said somewhere else, which he kind of pu pu pulled together. But nonetheless, it was an entertaining book, and it wasn't a bad book. Um, but he then got very jealous and suspicious of me when I wrote Down the Highway, because Down the Highway was a very successful book, commercially yeah. successful and he was pretty pissed off that this guy had come out of nowhere from a journalist background. And in fact, I've been in tabloid journalism, which is looked down upon. Oh, yeah. And he was very kind of sniffy about that. And he said some very actually untrue things about me. In one version of, of, of Behind the Shades, he says, I used to work for the Sun newspaper. I've never in my life worked for the Sun newspaper. Mm -hmm. And so he, you know, he can't even get his facts right. But in, the latest ver in his latest opus, this dreadful thing called... Um, I don't even know what it's called, this terrible thing he's written, which is just this awful, clunky, self-indulgent book. He kind of, he, he refers to me so rudely and gratuitously and at such length. Yeah. I, I was amazed. I was in this, and I look, looked in the, in the index of this book and I um, realized I was in this book more than Bruce Springsteen. You know, there's more <laughs> entries to Howard Soons than Bruce Springsteen in the S's. And I thought, this guy is, you know, he's, a, he's, a, he's an idiot. And I complained to his publisher and uh, when the publisher kind of shrugged their shoulders, I spoke to the Guardian newspaper in England and told them what I thought of him. Um, and I, my, and my opinion of him is pretty low, actually. Uh, but I wouldn't have, I wouldn't, I wouldn't air that if he hadn't, if he hadn't started it. You know, if he, if he'd had the good manners to keep his absurd ideas about other writers, his kind of jealous paranoia of other writers to himself. He, his whole thing has been the Dylan expert. That's his whole thing, which is specious and nonsense. And he's very suspicious of anybody else. He wasn't the first Dylan writer, and he won't be the last. And, I, and, I, and he certainly isn't the best. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, he really isn't the best. Right. Yeah. He's, he's not a good writer. I mean, he, he writes very bad prose. Uh, and he's not a journalist, so he doesn't really kind of research things in, in a vigorous way. He just kind of real, and he overwrites, you know, overwriting is one of the marks of a bad writer. You know, professional writers are succinct and they edit themselves. But bad writers, you know, if your grandpa writes his life story, he will overwrite it. You know, uh, a professional writer writes a life story, you use the, the fewest words possible to make a point. You don't keep repeating yourself. Should and we? You, uh, and, you don't, and, you, and you don't attack other writers. Because um, they're going to, they're going to, as I am now, they're going to say they're going to say nasty things back, and you know. So here I am again saying that he's a terrible writer, and I and I I would urge people not to buy his terrible books. <laughs> Joe, maybe we should wrap up a copy of uh, Strunk and White's Elements of Style and uh, and and post it over to uh, Clinton Halen. Oh, very good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a kind of curious thing that two of the leading. Dylan Wright, I suppose, in the world, oddly enough, are both British yep. and both have these American first names. I mean, it's occurred to me that I'm Howard and I'm British and Halen is Clinton and he's British. Um, 
and that's a sort of slightly um, maybe that's that's just a coincidence although there is there is an element of it there is an interesting element there whereby i think people abroad out of the states kind of see dylan with more reverence than people in america do oh yes i i think i think that is absolutely spot on Dylan is not the only person you've written books about, right? And you've written books about other people who other authors have also written about. Is this some is this dynamic with you and Clinton somewhat common in the writing world? Have you had any sort of experiences uh, with other authors of people who wrote books about Lou Reed or McCartney or Bukowski or anything like that? Oh yeah, I mean I think writers generally are jealous of each other. Yeah, okay. You know, I mean, because you're like you're on you're on each other's turf and you're competitors, but the protocol is that you don't express that. You don't, you don't put that in your book. I mean, if you look in my book, my Bob Dylan biography, I I politely acknowledge Clinton Halen's books, and I don't I don't comment on them. I don't say he's a terrible writer. I'm telling you this now because he because he cause, but it's not in the book. I mean, I would never dream of saying that in the book because it's it makes you look cheap. So yeah, so when I wrote, uh, I've written biographies, so when I wrote uh, you know, all, all my biographies, you know, if you're gonna write a biography of anyone of any significance, somebody else has either done it or they're going to do it, you know? Yeah. Because if no one's writing about them, then they're not worth writing about. Um, but you don't, you don't talk about it, you know, express it. It's like, um, it's like kind of, uh, you know, being in love with two guys being in love with the same woman, you know? <laughs> but you don't talk about that kind of thing. You just, you just try and win. You just try and win that fight. You don't talk about it. It's un undignified. And it's am amateurish. Yeah. I recall reading Down the hot Highway, and you did cite, you know, Halen's works before. And I always, when I read the book, I, I just assumed you guys were peers and there wasn't any beef. So that's why this news last year uh, surprised me. I will say I did read Behind the Shades and I think what you said is spot on. I found it to be overly long and dry and, and, and bizarrely opinionated in places where it didn't need to be opinionated. And that sort of takes me as a reader out of the story. He's got a, he's got a great weakness for telling people what he thinks. You know? yeah. And the truth is, no one gives a shit what he thinks. Yeah. You know, we're trying to talk about the man and his life, or I am, I, yeah. Bob Dylan. I don't, you know, you don't, you don't care what I think of the songs. I mean, what I think of the songs isn't neither here nor there. Uh, the songs speak for themselves. What I can do as the biographer is reveal the man's life yeah. um, in, a, in, a, in a kind of, in a crafted way, so it makes sense as a story. So if you read down the highway, you kind of get a feeling for who this man is. As a person, you know, you kind of get a sense of, you know, this is what he's really like. This is how he lives. How he's, this is how he's become who he is. Um, but it's not literary. It's not, um, you know, in it, it's not um, high school literary criticism. Right. I find, well, that rather, I find that rather pathetic, really. I mean, someone like Christopher Ricks, so Christopher Ricks can indulge in that because he's a, an Oxford don of the highest, you know, standing in the world of um, academia. But some... Some pissant Bob Dylan nut, uh, you know, I don't give a shit what they think about Bob Dylan's music. Yeah. Christopher well, Ricks, is that Dylan's vision of sin, right? Was yeah, the, so, so, Chris, so, so Christopher Ricks is what it was in his day, one of the greatest English um, liter literature professors in the world. Uh, you know, he's a very significant person. Um, but, you know, uh, many Bob Dylan books are written by very insignificant people. 